Do you find yourself at all skeptical that the United States can fix man-made climate change? You've got some nerve on you there, apostate. We have found the witch! May we burn, huh? Burn! 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 Uh, uh, global warming? Uh, uh, I meant climate change? By popular request, this is a list of the top five myths associated with global warming, I mean climate change. Now, I know what you're thinking and or saying to your computer screens. Who are you? That's me. To create a video debunking climate change. You're no atmospheric scientist. See, the thing about that is, neither are you. Neither is this guy. My purpose here is not at all to pretend to be a scientist, but to get you, the viewer, to think about real science versus media hype. We're all gonna die. First off, here's the definition of science. Now, if you find yourself at all skeptical, a climate science denier is what you're labeled. Climate denier community. Climate deniers. Climate denial. Those who deny climate change. Ignorant, out of touch, or crazy. Either you believe in science or you don't. Climate change deniers. It's important to note this label is applied to anybody who finds themselves at all skeptical that the current proposed legislation would do anything to curb imminent global warming, I mean climate change. Let me explain a little more. To be a science denier at all to the current climate change coalition, you merely need to be skeptical of any one of these four things. Number one, that the earth is warming. Number two, that humans are the primary cause of it. Number three, that it will have catastrophic results. And most importantly, number four, that the only entity competent and fit to stop these results is the United States government or some international form of government. Unless you accept all of those points wholesale, you are labeled a science denier by the same people who often push the idea that gender is merely a figment of your imagination. But that's none of my business. Maybe you believe all of these points, and that's fine. I want to hear from you in the comments section, because unlike the current climate change coalition, I don't believe that my opponents should be jailed. You know, what's your thought on jailing skeptics as war criminals? Uh... Well, if the, we'll see what happens. Uh, was it appropriate to jail the guys from Enron? Interesting. Okay, right? So we'll see what happens. Bill Nye the Fascist Guy. Bill Nye the Fascist Guy. Do, 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 do. So I present to you the top five global warming, I mean climate change myths that you most likely believe. Consensus. 97% of scientists agree on climate change. Before we get to the fact that this is patently untrue, it's important to note that science isn't determined by consensus, it's determined by truth. There might have been consensus that the Earth was flat among certain circles. Truth revealed that it wasn't. Oops. There was consensus among many groups of Darwinians that black people were less evolved than white people and closer to our common ape-like ancestors. Truth revealed that's not the case. Just kidding. <laughs> right away, the biggest argument used has gotten us away from actual science. But even this argument is false. The 97% statistic first appeared in 2009 in a study by University of Illinois master's student Kendall Zimmerman and her advisor Peter Doran. It was a two-question survey and only 5% of people who answered, a little more than 150, were actual climate scientists. The 97% comes from an even smaller subset of people, 79 people who were self-professed climate scientists with over 50% of their research being conducted on the subject of climate change. So that 97% first came from 70-something scientists who agreed that the Earth's temperatures have risen since the 1800s and that humans are likely a contributing factor. People used this number and ran with it. Heating is adjourned. When evidence was wearing a little thin and people started questioning it, in 2013, Australian blogger John Cook and his buddies reviewed some abstracts of peer-reviewed papers published from 91 to 2011. And what were his findings? Coincidentally, that exactly 97% of scientists, either explicitly or implicitly, made the assertion that humans were somewhat responsible for warming. Not even climate change, warming. His work was debunked as crap. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. In the publication Science and Education in 2013, for example, David R. Lee Gates, Legate, I don't know, I'm not racist, a professor of geography at the University of Delaware and former director of its Center for Climatic Research, and three co-authors reviewed the same papers as Mr. Cook and found only 41 papers, a whopping 0.3% of all 11,944 abstracts, or 1% of the 4,014 even expressing an opinion 
Certainly not 97%. That's it. I know you're thinking, what are you hiding? Isn't there more from which this 97% number came? No, there really isn't. All references available at louderwithcrowder.com. Okay, here's the point. Climate change advocates have a problem, and rightfully so, with a petition that was sent to the United States government with over 30,000 people claiming to have some sort of gripe or skeptical view of climate change. People on the left have said this isn't an accurate enough sample size, and there aren't enough people here who are actual atmospheric scientists. You know what? I agree. I think that's fair. So why don't we apply that same standard to this 97% consensus trash? It's true. Just because someone's a scientist doesn't mean they know any more about actual climate science than you or me. I'm a botanist. You wouldn't have your gastrointestinologist perform your brain surgery unless, like non-climate scientist Bill Nye, your head is planted firmly up your ass. Bill Nye the douchebag guy. Bill Nye the douchebag guy. I'm not even saying that most climate scientists, particularly those in a public dole, wouldn't say that climate change is an imminent threat and humans are the cause of it. My point is that just because someone says there is consensus, it doesn't absolve you or them of critical thinking. If you can't make the case as to why climate change is a catastrophic threat and man-made, you have no business citing some arbitrary number of which you don't even know the original source. By the way, who are these top climate scientists, like the head of the Sierra Club referencing? How is it incorrect? When our experts, it's been refuted long ago, and there's no long, it's not up for a scientific debate. Interns, but that's none of my business. Myth number two, you've heard this one everywhere. The ice sheets are melting. Truth, the Antarctic ice sheets are actually growing by billions of tons per year. Does that come to me from climate change denial slash flat earthers.com? No, how about NASA? According to the new analysis of satellite data, the Antarctic ice sheet showed a net gain of 112 billion tons of ice per year from 1992 to 2001. So where does the myth come from that the ice sheets are melting? The net gain, net gain being the key words, slowed down to only 82 billion tons of ice per year between 2003 and 2008. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, okay, numbers are relative and billions, it's hard to quantify. Let me give you the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario humanly possible. If the net gains continued to slow at the current rate without fail, it would still take over three decades for the Antarctic ice sheet to see any form of net loss. Just like contrary to Al Gore saying that Mount Kilimanjaro would have no snow within the decade, there's plenty of snow. Still, year-round. Do we sometimes see it decrease? Absolutely. Anything close to catastrophic? Many scientists say no. Let's clip along here like you're still glad to be watching me. Myth! The polar bears are dying off! Truth! There are possibly more of these soulless killing monsters on Earth today than ever, certainly since we've begun monitoring them. Oh, I'm gonna kill the bear. Say it, I'm gonna kill the bear. Again, all third-party references at louderwithcrowder.com. There's possibly a low of around 12,000 in the 1960s with at least 25,000 on Earth today, likely much more. Also, it's one of the few species known to actually hunt humans. The hell are we keeping them around for? Say it, I'm gonna kill the bear, say it. Say I'm gonna kill the bear. Set! Science hat off, the polar bear myth was one that was easily sold through Disney films, where we could paint them as cute, cuddly little woodland creatures clinging to an iceberg in an attempt to get your kids to recycle. Don't show your kids this actual polar bear tearing apart this baby seal, tossing his lower intestines across the Alaskan tundra. If their population keeps growing, that won't be a seal, it'll be your son. Science hat back on, kill all of them. I'm gonna kill the bear. Say it again! I'm gonna kill the bear. And again! I'm gonna kill the bear! Good! Myth number four. Our current climate models are accurate, and our predictions have been stellar. I think you can guess where this one's going. We rely on a few organizations for these predictions, one of which is NOAA. They can't even accurately predict how many hurricanes there will be this year in Florida. We've tasked them with acting as our first warning system for retired French Canadians and old Jewish men in Hawaiian shirts, and their technology can't even get that right. Okay, what is wrong with the thing? Oh, f me. 
me, it's not working. It's a yum. From Climate Gate to more recently, over 300 scientists are imploring lawmakers to investigate NOAA. Because on record, NOAA scientists upwardly adjusted temperature readings taken from the engine intakes of ships to eliminate the hiatus in global warming from the temperature record. Oh yeah, by the way, they call that the pause. Yeah, by the way, there was a complete and total dead stop to all global warming for over 15 years, and rather than readjust their models, current climate scientists employed by your tax dollars simply chalk it up to being the pause. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Where else does this occur in scientific research? Gosh, that groundbreaking cancer drug treatment? We were wrong. For over 15 years, it helped nobody at all. Matter of fact, it might have even given some people cancer. We'll just call it the break. Maybe it's because of this kind of science and the idea that if you're skeptical at all, you're simply a science denier that's led to so many predictions being wrong, including, by the way, nearly all of the predictions made in Al Gore's Oscar-nominated An Inconvenient Truth. Nominated or did it win? Yeah, it won two Oscars. Well, I want to die. Which predictions to rattle off a few like Mount Kilimanjaro as we address the polar bears? North Pole still has ice. He didn't account for the 15 plus year pause and the weather has not gotten worse. But you can go back to the 70s and find other doomsday predictions like global cooling, overpopulation and the mass starvation epidemic, which would have been spread by 1990. Well, funnily enough, I was just talking to my friend about that. Our speedometers melted and as a result, it's very hard to say with any degree of accuracy exactly uh, how fast we were going. And of course, the constant predictions of resource depletion, peak oil, and possibly mass extinction, all of these have been made by either your federal government or very respected scientists since the 1970s up until now. When these predictions are verifiably wrong, as they nearly always are, do we recalibrate and say, you know what, maybe things aren't as imminent as we've said, or do we simply dismiss any dissidents as climate science deniers? They've made predictions. You and I and planet Earth has been the experiment. We've been able to test many times the hypothesis, and in many instances, it was wrong. Well, yeah, I could buy that, sure, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, you would know better than us, uh, especially since we got a melted speedometer. Abandoning that and moving the goalposts? That's the definition of being anti-science. But again, if you disagree with me, that's great. I think this discussion should take place. I'm not trying to jail you. Again, check all the references at louderwithcrowder.com. Look at the source predictions and then observe the results. Many of these climate scientists wanted you to believe that even as early as the 1990s, the earth would be like this. But really, it's been like this. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything that's... Matter of fact, one of the most often cited predictions from 2007 in the BBC by Professor Wieslaw Maslowski, I don't know how I pronounced it, I'm not racist, he predicted that the ice caps would be entirely melted by 2013. When it didn't happen, did they admit they were wrong? No, they just said actually it's going to happen in 2016. That's when the Earth's going to be like this. Ah! When Crazy Harold Camping predicted the apocalypse in October 2011, it didn't happen, we laughed. When self-proclaimed scientists do the exact same thing, we say that laughing is anti-science. All of this brings us to our final and most important myth. Number five. That national or international government is the only entity capable of solving imminent climate change catastrophe. After all, something on this large a scale could only be entrusted to the organization responsible for public schools, Medicare, and the post office. Let's start with the United States government. Who can solve it? The EPA? They've demonstrated that they're woefully inept to handle the tasks that have been given to them. Oh, how are those ethanol subsidies working out? You can find countless, very recent examples, like the over 2.2 billion in tax liabilities for green programs under the recent administration. One of the most notorious was Solyndra, who received over 500 million in government loans as an upstart green energy company when we knew that they very likely couldn't pay it back, but there was pressure on the government to lend to green energy. Now, I'm not against green energy, but when the governments tried to incentivize it and manipulate markets, it's turned out to be a disaster, as has been admitted in Germany. Nein, 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 nein. Maybe that's because sometimes the rush 
toward renewable green energy can actually be dirtier, as is the case often with wind turbines. How do they get created? How do they get put up? The Energizer Bunny can only take you so far. Hint, coal, oil, gas, that's used to create these things which invariably end up being less efficient. Big government can't get out of its own way even when it has an entirely leftist legislature as seen when they tried to put solar panels up on the Mojave Desert, but then there was gridlock because of an endangered species of tortoise. Crush the tortoise, grind the shell, turn it into energy. Let's skip a step and just burn the tortoises. Tortai? Better yet, feed them to the polar bears. Let's have one big furry bonfire. I'm gonna kill the mother The truth is that hybrid cars aren't necessarily greener than normal cars. How do you think they're built? Often from minerals and raw supplies that come from countries that are mining for them without any kind of government oversight. They're merely tossing a 12 year old in between his break from making Nike shoes and hoping the roof doesn't collapse in on him so they have to send in the canaries and create an obituary. Does that offend you? Not as much as this crap should offend your intelligence. And little Chen lost his life for nothing because the most green thing you could have done would have been to buy an old used car. Yes, over a hybrid, buy any old used car. A fucking Datsun, a fucking Toyota, a fucking Mustang, a fucking Buick, four fucking wheels and a seat. But instead, you demanded your white guilt mobile with poor handling. I want a fucking car right fucking now. This is the part where environmentalists ignore the crony corporatism. Like Elon Musk's growing capitalist empire being fueled by $4.9 billion in government subsidies. Shh, he's doing it for the people. And Tesla's not doing so hot. I can already see the comments section now. I must be funded by big oil, big energy, big gas, fracking. But guess what the truth is? Guess who can never actually give you an accurate account of what's currently happening with climate change and the subsequent government legislation? The people conducting research whose very job is predicated on the idea that climate change is an imminent threat. It's just like baseline budgeting with public sector employee unions and your local road work. Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight year old? How often toward the end of the year do you see roads being dug up and people standing by idly not doing anything? The reason for that is a term that's called baseline budgeting. Let's say for a moment that those people did their work early and came in under budget. Well, next year, the federal, state, or local legislature would look at that and say, hey, we're being pretty efficient here. We can cut some funding and put it somewhere else where we might need it. To ensure that that never happens, these people run out the clock, make sure they spend the entire budget and ask for more the next year. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? That's why government programs virtually always grow and are never downsized or streamlined. If someone says, well, my government grant has resulted in the discovery that the Antarctic sheets are growing and there are more polar bears than ever, guess what? Thank you, sir, your job is done. So instead you say, well, maybe there is more ice, maybe there are more polar bears, but it could get a lot worse. I need to study more in relation to climate change. Okay, break it down in terms of, I uh, I'm okay. I, I think I'm getting you. Am I saying that's everybody on the dogmatic climate change side of the ledger? No, but I'm not the one saying that we shouldn't have a discussion and possibly anybody critical of my opinion should be jailed. Do you really think big oil and energy are going around giving me checks or every single person who's possibly skeptical of these points listed? Well, let me tell you why it matters to me to set the record straight. Because unlike the currently always shifting, goalpost moving, cataclysmic predictions coming from the neo-environmentalist lobby, we know right now, we can observe statistically, scientifically, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that our current green legislation and proposed environmentally protecting legislation hurts poor people. And not just poor people in the first world. Sure, if gas goes up a couple of dollars per gallon and subsequently milk and all your goods and services, that's kind of inconvenient for you. For the poor kid living in Mexico who works all week to buy a gallon of gas, or the kid out there in the plains of Zambia who needs any kind of energy he can possibly get, it's a death sentence. Your white guilt and skeptic shaming actually hurts real lives on Earth today. So if nothing else from this video, maybe you'll be willing to entertain a discussion from both sides of the aisle. Maybe you'll go to louderwithcrowder.com and check out our dozens of sources. And above all else, maybe you will join me in the fight to kill all polar bears. I'm gonna kill the mother
And that's all I have to say about that. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the box that says subscribe or click my face to go to louderwithcrowder.com to read the references. If you want to hear me talk more with my crew about climate change, click on episode 89. That's the full show. You could find that you like it. You could find that you've wandered into some strange dark corner of the internet and immediately regret it. Speaking of dark, strange corners of the internet, there's a mystery box. Oh, oh, what's that? Click it and find out. I dare you. What are you, a mystery box denier?